self-propulsion is not limited to bombardment. Many seeds, including wild oats, drill themselves into the soil where they have landed. Changes in humidity make them curl and twist as ribbons of stiff bristles grip the soil. Does this little seed know that it must burrow to be safe from predators? To be ready to sprout at a moment's notice? Does it and its army of little friends have plans for propagation? Concealed, even in the most tranquil of settings, there is always the ruthless and devious seed, apparently scheming to manipulate animals. A famous inventor, Monsieur de Mistral and his dog, both had encounters that made them wary of plants. Years of hunting in the Swiss Alps brought aggravation caused by burdock plants. The dog collected more burrs than peasants, though that was hardly his fault. Getting a free ride reveals the most malevolent, exploitative characteristic of plants. Here in Arizona is a device most aptly called the Devil's Claw. Green pods dry and split to reveal a contraption that becomes an instrument of torture. Because it's a good place to grow, each pod drops one seed on the ground. The curved spurs are a device to make sure that the other seeds are carried away for free. The limping deer knows that there is something wrong with its hoof though it may not understand the motives of the Devil's Claw. Success at last? Disguised as stones, and almost as hard, the Devil's seeds wait for the rains. The burdock's ingenious methods depend more on its hitchhiking abilities. Being an engineer by profession, Monsieur de Mistral decided to investigate how the burdock clung on with such tenacity. Might anything useful come from this infuriating seed? Five years later, in 1957, Monsieur de Mistral perfected Velcro, a direct consequence of both man's inventiveness and the cunning nature of plants. Mm -hmm. 
Velcro is but one example of man's ruthless exploitation of plants. We grow them, we eat them, smoke them, wear them, even engineer their genetics, changing the face of our planet to maximize their production. We may think we have mastered our natural world, but instead, have we become slaves to the very plants we believe we dominate? By their cooperation and even compliance, have they not forced us to guarantee their immortality by making it impossible for us to survive without them? explore and colonize the outer limits of the universe, we will have to share our adventure with those clever and life-sustaining plants. <laughs> 